What's up, Barefoot Nation? This week, we are talking about rocks <laughs> uh, for your water feature. So, um, hopefully, uh, by the end of the video, you'll see the difference between granite and moss rock, zebra rock even. You ever seen that before? You can make your water feature look totally different based on the type of rock that you choose. So, anyways, let's rock and roll! <laughs> So selecting rock for your water feature comes down to a couple things. You know, you can take a, build a pond out of marble and quartz and you know, whatnot if you wanted to, if you had the budget. I think that's really foolish. Okay, so you know how much of a budget you have for your rock. Um, the next most important thing is going to be, what do you want your pond to look like? So here in Western New York, it's, Generally, what you're going to see for bedrock or, um, you know, in creeks is going to be limestone or granite. So another look that you could possibly go for is stacked slate. And now this could be really great if you ha already have stacked slate walls in your garden. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that this is a pretty labor intensive and so therefore the cost is going to go up from a labor perspective. Um, but you know, the look is if you can, if it's in your budget to have a stacked slate wall or two in the pond or waterfall, I definitely recommend it because it just looks absolutely fantastic. It's my opinion, but I mean, check it out, you know, tell me what you think. And possibly the biggest consideration as far as selecting rock for your water feature is, are you going to do this project yourself or are you going to hire hopefully a competent water feature artist. It's really easy to qualify your different water feature um, companies. Um, one easy way that um, you can go by is if they're certified with Aquascape. Um, Aquascape does a really good job of, you know, making sure that people have a base, anyone who applies with them is gonna have a base line you know knowledge of ecosystem function you get what you pay for you really do selecting a good water feature artist is huge it's possibly going to make or break your experience with water features if you hire it out if i could ask a quick favor of you guys over 90 percent of folks who watch this channel are not subscribed so if we could get that down to like 70 percent that would be awesome so if you could, just hit that subscribe button, and if you want all the notifications, hit the bell to all or personalized or however you want to do that. It truly does help the channel for you guys to do that. So much appreciated, and let's get back into some pond stuff. So you can see here with the waterfall turned off that there's, especially in the winter time, a pretty significant what's called biofilm. So there's actually moss that's mixed in here, but Personally, I try to keep this somewhat at a minimum. Another thing that really needs to be mentioned here is these rocks are heavy. And so again, it's like you need to take into consideration the physicality of building water features, which it could be another reason to hire it out. Like this rock, this spillway stone that I'm scraping algae off of weighs easily 60 or 70 pounds. And you know, that is, uh, that could be a pretty significant thing when you're lifting, you know, a hundred or 200 or more of these boulders. It, uh, it can be physically taxing. So that is something to keep in mind is that you might start a project and realize that you probably should have, uh, get some help with it. And that's totally fine. So another note regarding the weight of rocks is different rocks even even if just within granite some rocks are more dense and therefore more heavy than others if you just have rocks that are the same size it's going to look bad whether they're it's going to look unnatural and not ideal whether they're all 200 pounds or machine size or they're all little kind of cobblestones like that so it's all going to look a little bit goofy regardless so this bank, although again, I would probably do it a little bit differently, and I do think it looks better in the summer with all the plants, of course. 
Um, but this bank is kind of a great example. You can see this rock here weighs about 150 pounds. There's some slate mixed in, which, you know, make, it even has like a nice little curve to it, to this little bit of rock work here. And then there's these two granite boulders, which again are in the kind of 70 to 100 pound range. Doesn't look like it when they're set into the proper space with moss growing on them and, and you know, plant, well, I guess the ostrich ferns just have um, their, their natural mulch or detritus at this stage of the year. Um, and yes, they do push right through that. It's almost like they evolved to not be cleaned up in the fall. And I can't help but show the pups because, but there's even a consideration with dogs and water features. If you want to have a water feature and you have dogs, totally feasible. Logie, come here. Logie. Logie, sit. Anyways, guys, dogs are totally compatible with water features. Um, if you are concerned about liner, of course, maybe instead of gravel on the marginal shelves, you can do slate or bigger pieces of gravel and not just the kind of number two slash pea gravel size. So that's one consideration. And then if you were to allow them to go in and out of the water, what are you sniffing? So you could make a nice little entry and just train them to use that. Or you could just minimize the use of smaller stone and make it really nice and easy for them to get in and out or even have a little beach. All right, I think you've seen enough of this water feature. So let's, so. As you can see here, this waterfall looks completely different than the waterfall back at the OG Barefoot Gardens. This rock here is called Zebra Rock. And so what's cool about it is I believe it's a type of limestone with quartz running through it. Zebra Rock is gonna give you a totally different look to your water feature, but of course it only comes in crates. You can't really get this stuff in bulk that I've ever seen. So because of that, it's going to increase the cost or make the cost more, it's going to increase the cost noticeably. The other thing too is I believe Zebra Rock comes all the way from Australia. So, you know, the shipping cost is another reason why this rock could be more expensive for you. If you live in Australia where this rock is native, just like granite boulders or limestone for me, um, that would make it much more affordable. In addition to rock, you might think this... So in addition to the rock, I'm sure you've been looking at this stump. And so this was actually a blue spruce that I cut out of a client's garden. This was set in the water feature like pretty early on in the process. And that is why the water kind of cascades around it so naturally. I just wanted to highlight how this water feature looks great even in the dead of winter. So here basically I'm just talking about how this waterfall is only about a foot tall and you don't need a waterfall that's two or three feet tall to have an impact. The view from the house as well as the surrounding garden is just tremendous even just with a waterfall that's 15 inches or a foot tall. If you insist on a waterfall that's too tall for a flat backyard then you're gonna have to commit to a burn that's pretty large to naturalize your waterfall that is, for all intents and purposes, out of scale with your property. And even if you're doing a more formal or contemporary water feature, such as this uh, spillway bowl, you can see it's, I consider it more contemporary both because the shape is square and the water is emanating out of kind of a man-made thing as opposed to that natural, the two natural water features that you saw before. Although it is kind of a hybrid between natural and, and a man-made, you know, fountain. But even in a situation like this, it's nice to have some rock in there to naturalize and soften the, these um, crisp lines of the bowl. Oh man, the AirPods like the sound of water better than my voice. So basically what I'm talking about here is um, how I'm using rocks that are rather angular and square, uh, both as a surface to grow moss on, but also to kind of highlight the kind of contemporary uh, design that this water feature has. 
Another thing to consider with your water features is the type of gravel that you're using. So the gravel that you see here is both Mexican beach pebble and that what I'm pointing to is Carolina, Carolina, <laughs> Caribbean um, river pebbles, or that's what they call it anyway. Drop it in the comments if you've actually seen white stone in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, don't know. But uh, anyway, the cost of these Caribbean and or Mexican beach pebbles they only generally come in these little one and a half or, or half cubic foot bags. Um, whereas the cost of the stone that I'm showing here, this just typical pea gravel, I believe it's a granite base, is going to be significantly less. So for a bigger water feature, that's probably better. In smaller applications, you can definitely get away more with using the more decorative or the extremely decorative stones because you don't have the quantity that you're going to need to get. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Hopefully now you have a bit better of an understanding of some of the details that go into uh, water feature construction. Um, let me know down in the comments if you have any preferences now regarding rock or if you would just leave it up to the professionals. Drop it down below in the comments if you're more of a DIY water feature builder or if you would hire a certified aquascape contractor. I mean, just go with them, they're the best. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week because hopefully I'll be out of hibernation. The weather is getting good out there. Even here in Buffalo, New York, where winter and land. Hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching.